Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. This is my video about the upcoming full moon in Sagittarius. I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer, and what I do with these videos is share my sort of insights and thoughts about the energies surrounding the astrology. I bring in fixed stars and cosmic connections, and sometimes if it's relevant, I'll look at the numbers as well, because I feel that um, astrology and numerology are really complementary and work so well together. So this full moon is taking place in the sign of Sagittarius and of course full moons are when the moon gets to the exact opposite position in the chart and um, opposing the sun. So the sun will be in Gemini with the moon in Sagittarius and this is happening on the 23rd of May when sun and moon are both at two degrees 55 minutes so what we tend to do with full moons we're always thinking about um marking the end of a cycle so there is a, often a focus on releasing on letting go on completion on things coming to a natural end and we always look at the energy of the sign that the moon is in so if we're thinking about Sagittarius Sagittarius is the ninth sign in the zodiac it is ruled by Jupiter so it themes its themes are very much about expansion and being able to fly take a leap of faith and the Sagittarius is represented by the archer so the arrow so if we think of you know pointing the arrow above above and beyond there's a real sense of adventure with Sagittarian energy and um, very much carefree Sagittarius loves to feel free to be free and there's also a real focus on exploration consciousness and the higher mind being able to see the bigger picture there's also a real connection here to truth to wisdom to knowledge and Sagittarius wants to be very open-minded there's definitely um you know a feeling or a fear of being boxed in that simply doesn't work for Sagittarius it's a very spiritual sign it is the sign of the of the free spirit of the wanderer and there's a lot of joy of fun of being carefree when we're working with this energy and the other parts um of our sort of experience and our reality that Sagittarius is linked to is you know through the consciousness theme we're looking at religion we're looking at philosophy we're looking at dogma and gurus so you know this is very much um coming through the energy of the full moon but what is interesting is that although Sagittarius is very much about flying high you know going above and beyond um sort of moving beyond the mundane and our sort of three to 3d normal day-to-day -day reality there is a lot of earth in this chart so i'm going to talk through some of the themes that are um sort of showing up with the other planets but if we take just up, sort of to start off with the fact that this full moon is at a very early degree point it's at two degrees 55 minutes so this it falls within the first deacon of sagittarius in astrology each sign has 30 degree points starting from zero up to 29 and that is split into three deacons so the first deacon is zero to nine degrees and that tends to represent the more physical expression of the sign so already you know although Sagittarius wants to fly at the time of this new moon it feels very much to me when I feel into the energy that there is something keeping us and keeping it keeping the moon very grounded kind of almost as if to say you know you're looking for thrills for excitement for um greater understanding but actually the truth is it's not out there in the cosmos at this time it is actually within us and the very strong Taurus energy is really supporting that and because when if we look at the chart and I will post a picture of it at the end of this video and um, the moon is actually on its own in the chart it's sitting at you know in Sagittarius but the bulk of the action at the time of this new moon is actually in the opposing part of the chart there's very strong 
Taurus energy. There's quite a lot of Aries still with the North Node and Mars are both still and Chiron are in Aries. And then the Sun and Sedna are both in Gemini. So there's a real focus on the opposing part of the chart, which is very much sort of pulling the energy of this moon back into our day to day grounded Taurian earthly reality. So it's almost as if, um, you know, if we take the new consciousness and the new understanding and the higher mind that's coming through the Sagittarius frequency, it is as if this new consciousness and this new way of seeing things and this new understanding is actually landing within us. It is being grounded. It is being embodied at this time. So just looking at what else is happening, obviously the sun is in the opposing sign of Gemini, which is about the mind. Gemini is about learning. It is also very much linked to duality and to choice and to and because we have in Gemini, we have the twins that represent this sign and this energy. So there can be polarization and, you know, the moon is pulling um, sort of inviting us to almost move away from that separation consciousness and to come through to a higher sort of viewpoint which in in where we are more unified because Sagittarius is very much about unifying the energy but there is still a lot of information that needs to come through the Gemini sun that needs that wants to be heard and wants to be seen. I will talk about the galactic alignments because they're incredibly interesting in a minute but we have next to the sun in a pretty close conjunction but still in Taurus we have Venus and Jupiter and they are both at the 29 degree point of Taurus which is the final degree of this sign. Jupiter obviously has been in Taurus for the past year so this is very much um you know it's about to change signs but it doesn't it only happens once a year so th this this is a big deal for Jupiter to have to have got to this final degree point and of course the 29 degree is often associated with a little bit of chaos or even crisis energy because in its lower expression there can be a real rush to complete any lessons or any sort of tasks that that particular planet had set out to achieve while it moved through the sign. However, in its higher expression, it is about mastery. It's about, yes, I've done it. You know, I've learned everything that I plan to do and I've really got the hang of working with this energy. You know, I've worked all the way through the, the 30 degrees of this sign and I have made it. I've reached the final finishing line. And of course, Venus sitting right next to Jupiter, at exactly the same point, has got the same sort of attitude, the same thoughts, the same approach. But Venus is in a very strong position for that reason and she's also in her home sign of Taurus so Jupiter Jupiter sitting next to Venus is very much expanding her position her energy and her role in this chart and of course you know Venus is very much about our relationship with ourselves it is very much about beauty Venus is very is all about the feminine, the divine feminine energy within each within each of us. It's very creative energy. It's also linked to self-worth, to value, to our gifts, to our talents. And Jupiter is sitting right next to her, expanding all of those themes for us. So there's a real sense of actually, you know, acknowledging that it has been hard work. Taurus is a very um, thorough sign, very slow, very steady, very committed, very much a hard worker, you know, puts in the graft. It's been quite a slog and that's kind of, um, you know, the, the sense here, you know, we've really put in the work, we've really put in the effort, you know, we've been so thorough, so deliberate, so tenacious and we've had to persevere and push through quite a lot of challenge. But we have made it. We've got to that end point. And of course, you know, with um, Jupiter, there is expansion and there is growth. So this is going to come through the new gifts and the um, talents that are coming online with Venus at the end of Taurus. But we're also, you know, expanding our values, expanding our beliefs and the values that we place on our belief system. And there's just huge abundance here for 
the taking for anybody who wants to sort of step into that and start to claim, you know, their self-worth, to start to see themselves in a different light. Now, I'm going to come back to the fact that I feel very much that the deep and um, the divine feminine energies are really rising at this time. And I will come back to that. But we also have Neptune is at the 29 degree point of Pisces. So Neptune is sextiling Jupiter and Venus. And again, you know, a third planet, another outer planet at this anoretic degree point at the final degree of the entire zodiac. You know, this is quite rare. It's rare to have all these um, 29 um, final degree points in one chart like this. So Neptune in Pisces is very much sort of pushing us to embrace and explore our spiritual sides, to increase the connection with our higher selves, to bring it to come into a much more creative way of being, a much more compassionate way of being, to step into that unity consciousness, which is what the moon in Sagittarius is pushing for us to do as well. Neptune and Pisces is telling us that anything is possible. You just have to have that dream, that vision to be able to sort of visualize what it is you want to create. And then Venus and Jupiter in Taurus are saying, actually, this is absolutely possible because the Taurus energy is very creative, but it is also about making things real, bringing them into reality, making them tangible, you know, so that we can actually finally take a hold of what it is that we um, are working on and what what it is that we want to create. So again, you know, we've had the new moon in Taurus two weeks ago. And again, now, you know, with a strong energy in Taurus, it is still very much about creating the new, but it is real and it is for the long term. And there's a sense of there is not really um, any way we're going back now. We're very much looking forward. We're grounding something new and exciting in. So I think, you know, it's fair to say, speaking personally, I feel that something has shifted at a very physical, a very real level for me over the past few weeks. We've been getting a lot of solar flares, a lot of upgrades, a lot more light is coming in and things are being shaken up. You know, things that have been deeply buried and hidden and repressed and suppressed, you know, within each of us in an individual and personal level it is being shaken up. It's coming up to the surface to be dealt with. It's deeply uncomfortable in many, many ways. But, you know, we can see that happening as well out in the collective. Things are being um, uncovered and um, shaken up and so that they can come up and be seen and transmuted and healed ultimately. But there's definitely something very different in our reality at this time. And again, you know, there's a real sense that these changes are permanent through fixed earth sign of Taurus. There is no going back, but this is part of our future. Now, to sort of support that, we have the sun in trying to Pluto. And Pluto is very much the planet of transformation and evolution. And, you know, when Pluto is active, it is uncovering that which has been hidden so that we can evolve, so that we can grow. But Pluto is actually retrograde at this time. So this is very much about uncovering what is held deep within us. And of course, with Venus there, Venus very close to this trine being so close to the sun, you know, this is likely to be gifts that we have kept hidden that maybe we weren't aware of or that we were too scared to use or too scared to even admit that we had. So there's definitely something being uncovered, something stirring deep from within coming up to be seen, to be used, to be expressed and to be kept, to be very real, you know, and very useful. Because the sun is trying Pluto, the moon is in a sextile to Pluto. So again, this is very harmonious energy. But you know, we are having this new wisdom, this new consciousness through Sagittarius is coming through and it is really helping to evolve and helping us to grow and helping us to transform and to unearth that which has been hidden. And this is happening because Pluto is in retrograde, as I said, it is happening at an internal level. So it's almost as if we're shifting from the inside out. Out. As I said, you know, it's not out there anymore. It's happening within, within, deep within us. 
and that is what we have to kind of get a handle on and start to really understand. We shouldn't really be looking now to gurus and people to tell us how to be and what to be and how to act and how to think and what to believe. You know, we have to trust ourselves because all the answers and all the gold and all the value and worth is deep within us. And it is now time for us to really access it and embrace it. So we have... Um, Mercury is at 11 degrees of Taurus and you know so this is very much about our mindset so we're going to be thinking more, very creatively we're sort of focusing on the gifts and talents that are coming through Taurus it's very real it's very steady it's very um, deliberate very measured but also the 11 degree for me is the number of spiritual enlightenment and intuition so it is as if we have through the number 11 we have this energy coming straight down but it's coming into the earth to be embodied to be grounded so you know there is channeling there is um there is higher consciousness and higher understanding coming in but it is you know it is something that we can use as a resource because Taurus is also um all about resources and our toolkit that we have available but we definitely have this direct line access to higher consciousness through Mercury at the 11 degree point through the moon in Sagittarius through Neptune in Pisces, you know, there is a lot of higher light and information and energy coming through to support us. And the final thing to talk about the kind of more traditional astrological chart is Saturn in an opposition to Lilith in an exact opposition. So Saturn in Pisces, again, is about sort of reminding us the importance of our spiritual selves, of the connection to our higher self, of compassion, of unity, of creativity. And in op opposing Lilith in Virgo, this Lilith in Virgo is very much sort of talking to us about the shadow within our bodies. Virgo rules our body, but also Virgo is very much about service. So, you know, we might be really thinking about what have we or who have we and w or where have we been serving something that is not for our greatest good that has actually created more repression more rejection because Lilith you know was rejected and there is always deep shame and shadow to be worked through when Lilith is active but it is definitely a time with this opposition to we, we are letting something go and we are releasing so that we can um, sort of really work on that shadow side on what has been hidden and allow it to come to the light but shed much more compassion and much higher understanding and wisdom upon it. Now, just looking at the fixed star and cosmic alignments, this is an incredibly galactic full moon. Now the big, um, you know, there's lots, there's lots to sort of pull out here, but the, the big one is the fact that the sun and Taurus and Venus are all in a conjunction to stars in the Pleiades. Now, the Pleiades constellation being the seven sisters, again, very much linked to that feminine energy. And um, the Pleiadians are a race of beings who are completely connected to their heart centers and they operate from the heart. They're living within heart consciousness. So they're much more evolved, much more spiritually enlightened than we are on Earth. They are very compassionate. They are coming from a space of deep love, this huge creativity coming through with this conjunction. And there's also um, light, so much light which, you know, creates this sense of fun, of laughter, of the lightness of being very much um, linked to the Pleiadian energies. So, you know, we're likely at this time to be experiencing a lot of heart chakra activations, especially with Venus in her home sign at that anoretic degree and Jupiter sitting right there at the same time, bringing in that higher frequency energy. And, um, you know, this is a time for, you know, possibly our hearts to be opened quite um quite dramatic 
quite dramatically. And, you know, if we go back to what's happening on our planet, you know, currently with all the solar flares and all the solar activity and the amount of light that's coming in through the, these events, which seem to be nonstop right now, you know, this is potentially going to be something that um, is a result of that, a huge heart opening yeah, so this Pleiadian energy is really working with our sun, empowering us and really supporting our creative gifts and um, new talents are absolutely coming online. But they're going to be sort of from um, coming through with a higher consciousness from that heart space with and bringing in a much higher level of self-worth and how we value ourselves and what we are able to do and who we are. So we have, in conjunction to the moon, we have the fixed star Alpha Centauri. Now this star is really interesting because it is very strongly associated with the blue ray, which is a frequency that I talk about quite regularly and it's a frequency that I'm very closely aligned to. So this star is really showing us the importance of harmony, of light. There is also um, really deep telepathic and psychic abilities come through when this star is activated. And um, the Alpha Centaurians work very closely with crystals and understand, you know, how powerful and important crystals are. And they also serve as space holders and really are very much um, sort of flying the flag for spiritual liberation, for supporting us to liberate and free ourselves from any sort of situation or state of being where we have been held in states, you know, which are not serving our greatest good. So there is definitely a focus here with this star activation on freeing us from those either people or situations or belief systems that have held power over us that are really not supporting our evolution and our growth. Now, there's also a real um, link to Lemuria and to Telos and to Agatha when Alpha Centauri is in the chart. And I will talk about Lemuria in more detail shortly because there's a really interesting alignment that I want to bring to light through this chart. So, but we have this Alpha Centaurian energy, you know, again, very powerful star working with the moon. We also have the supergalactic center, which is one of the cosmic points. It's a very powerful cosmic point and it serves as a black hole, very magnetic energy, basically pulling us, magnetizing us towards higher consciousness. So, you know, this star, this cosmic point is very much about transmutation and alchemy and pulling away anything that does no longer, that no longer serves us. But there's also a really strong pull through the Libra energy at two degrees of Libra, pulling us towards justice, towards harmony, towards Towards collaboration and working, you know, in partnership with people in part in peace. That's a very strong theme of the Libra energy. Um, so you know, we are in, in as as well as it's pulling us towards that, it's also pushing us to go beyond what we know, beyond what we are comfortable with, expanding into that void where the of, of the black hole energy there's also a real strong sense with this um cosmic point the supergalactic center of destroyer creator energy and of course with pluto in a trine to this point pluto is very much amplifying that so you know an understanding that we do have to let go of and destroy things that have had their day that are no longer fit for purpose that are no longer serving us and that aren't going to be part of our new reality of our new world but it is a time with this act with this point active with this with the moon and with the sun of self-discovery and really deep healing though so very very beautiful very powerful energy now we've talked about neptune being conjunct shit in pegasus constellation in previous videos so just to recap you know this is now an exact conjunction and this shit um fixed star is very much about showing us 
how multidimensional we are. This star is the winged horse. You know, it's about freedom. It's about taking flight. It's about being able to see the bigger picture, see the new horizon. You know, it's coming up quick and fast now. And, you know, we are flying towards it to reach it. There is no restriction of time, of space when this star is active. So, you know, this is a really liberating, exciting and, and sort of dream big, dream have a much bigger picture star. There's also associations with, tri with time travel when we have this star active. So again, you know, that may be coming more online for you as we work with this final degree point of Neptune in Pisces. Pluto is still, even though it's retrograde, it's still conjunct Altair in the Aquila constellation. Aquila being the eagle. We've talked about this energy as well in the past, being able to fly high, see the bigger picture, have that um, courage to let go of what we've known and sort of see things from a much higher perspective. There's also very transformational energies here. Pluto being all about our evolution and um, yeah, just, you know, being able to, it's freedom ultimately is the real essence of Altair. We have Saturn is still in a conjunction to anchor in the Phoenicis or Phoenix constellation. So I talked about that energy in the new moon video, but again, all about transformation, allowing things to be burnt to the ground, to die away, to, um, you know, to dissolve probably more in the Pisces energy that is very much about letting go of the old so that the new can be reborn. And also with Arcana in the Eridanus constellation, which is also still conjunct Saturn, you know, this is about a quest, acknowledgement that we are on this spiritual journey. There's some very beautiful sort of magical energy here supporting us. And also an acknowledgement, you know, that because Eridanus is the river constellation, that, you know, the journey is very much flowing, um, but we are heading to the same de destination, which is ultimately the ocean as the river comes out into the sea or the ocean and this expanse of water, which we know we could sort of describe as the void, but ultimately it is higher consciousness and a higher state of being. Chiron is opposing Arcturus in the Boots constellation. So this is very much about support for our healing at a very deep and emotional level and also you know giving us insight into the connection between our energy bodies our etheric fields and bodies and our emotions and how our emotions and our state of mind affect us in the physical and how we can sort of use that information to really start to evolve the way we heal ourselves so that is um you know very significant and also the arcturians being for us like spiritual midwives always very present at times of great transition which of course you know normally would be when we come into our lifetime here at the time of birth and at the time of death but there is also a kind of acknowledgement here that this ascension process that we're going through is almost like a death of sorts so we have this beautiful Arcturian energy to hold the space and to guide us through it but we don't always have to lose we, we don't to be able to ascend at this in this um, time of history, we are not letting go or leaving our bodies behind. We're actually taking them with us. So they are with us, guiding the way, holding our hand. And also I would expect observing with great intrigue and interest as to how this process is underway and how we're going to manage it because it has never been done before. We've got the North Node is still in a conjunction to Alpha Rats in the Andromedan system. Again, huge focus on freedom, breaking free of any chains that have kept us bound, kept us fixed, kept us paralyzed, unable to move forward. Um, and also with Andromedan energy, you know, it is very much about spiritual enlightenment, about wisdom, about higher consciousness, very healing energy but also, you know, acknowledging that we have to be able to adapt and shift our energy to shape shift in order to kind of navigate these new energies and this new way of being that we're starting to really embrace as much more light comes through. Not the North Node, or, so the North Node is opposing Algarab um, in the Corvus constellation, but the South Node is actually in a conjunction to this star. So again, you know, this is very multidimensional energy 
Corvus Algarab is the messenger, the raven, the bird. So again, we have that sort of correlation with Pluto and Altair, avian energy in this chart. Um, and also Algarab is very strongly linked to the divine feminine. So that takes us back, you know, with the link to Venus, great mystery, um, great healing, and also themes of regeneration are coming through here. So an acknowledgement that, you know, regenerating and letting go is a really big part of this ascension. And again, you know, it's coming through the supergalactic center. It's coming through Pluto. It's coming through the North Node. It's coming through Neptune. It really is everywhere in this chart. Mercury is in a conjunction to a crux in the crux constellation. So again, Mercury being the mind, I've already talked about the 11 degree point, you know, being about spiritual wisdom coming through and channeling through from higher realms. A crux is a star of spiritual enlightenment. So, you know, we are being given an opportunity to understand ourselves and our world from a much higher perspective here. Um, it is about bringing spirit into matter. So with Mercury and Taurus, you know, it is that higher mind, that higher understanding is coming down into the physical. And it's like I said at the beginning, you know, this is like a new truth, a new consciousness is landing within us and is becoming part of us now it's no longer out there it's no longer something that you know we might have gone on a quest to find to and um, you know to rely on a spiritual guru or a, or a teaching you know this is something that we're able to connect to within us and it is really coming in strong so my very final point was I wanted to talk again about the divine feminine energy. Now, divine feminine is an energy which has been very much repressed over, you know, the last few hundred, maybe thousand years. Um, and certainly, you know, the patriarchal energy and um, that male energy, divine, the masculine energy has been very strong and has been leading the way. But we have this new sort of new um, uprising of the divine feminine coming through. And what's really interesting that obviously with this full moon, Venus, which is the planet of the feminine energy, divine feminine, is in its strongest point. There's so much Taurus energy, which is all about the feminine energy, creative energy, all about love, all about value, all about self-worth, expanded by Jupiter. I actually forgot to talk about Sedna earlier because, of course, Sedna is conjunct the sun in this full moon chart. So Sedna is, again, very feminine. You know, she was the goddess of the sea and she went through a huge transformation um, experience as she had to let go of everything that, that she knew through being betrayed by the patriarchy. The Pleiades are very feminine energy. And, you know, we have this kind of new, um, it's not really new because it's always been there, but this um, strengthening and this empowering of the divine feminine coming up through Sedna, coming up from the depths, from the oceans where it has been perhaps locked in or hidden away or repressed for many different reasons over time, over history, it is starting to be unlocked again and to gather strength. Um, so the feminine energy is very much about um, being in tune with your intuition. Um, feminine energy is not about having control or, or disempowering others but it is about standing in your sovereignty having a much stronger connection to nature to who you are and to universal energy you know there's a real link here to very soft way of being and um, soft and yet strong at the same time being able to receive being very receptive, allowing and moving with the flow. And it is much more um, spiritual um, way of being, which is coming through now. So you know, we are stepping into a time when the divine feminine is going to rise again. And what's really um, remarkable in this chart is the fact that the asteroid Hawaii that we usually use or that many astrologers use as a marker for Lemuria within the chart is at two degrees of Gemini. So Hawaii or Lemuria is conjunct the sun at this time in a trine with Pluto, in a trine with the supergalactic centre, 
conjunct Sedna. So, you know, Lemuria is a civilization that was very much linked to mother god consciousness, to the feminine way of being, um, very spiritually advanced. You know, the Lemurians worked very closely with nature. They worked with crystals. They programmed so much information into crystals. You know, very compassionate, very much heart-centered way of being. Now, the Lemuria is a civilization that was um, sadly lost. It sank to the bottom of the ocean. But at this time, the fact that this asteroid is conjunct the sun in the chart, it just is speaking to me so strongly of a return of the information of the wisdom of the frequency and signature of Lemuria is coming back to us. And it is coming through, you know, rather than information that is out there, coming through as understanding that we are able to access because Gemini is very much about taking the information and making it accessible to people, making sure that people can understand it. And the sun is shining a light. So it's as if, you know, the memories of Lemuria, the information, the wisdom, the frequency and that signature of that civilization of that time of being in our history is very much being brought to light now. And of course, the Pleiadians have got a very strong link to Lemuria because it is said that that there were many beings from the Pleiades who actually seeded in Lemuria to bring the Pleiadian consciousness through to Earth at that time. So, you know, with Sedna you know, in Gemini as well, there is, is, it is as if this information and understanding and knowledge is coming up from the depths. Obviously, you know, Lemuria sank to the depths of the ocean, which is where Sedna also had to sink. So again, there's beautiful synergy through all of these stories weaving together. And, and the supergalactic center is really pulling that information out of us, out of where it's been hidden. Pluto, again, about, you know, uncovering what has been hidden so that we can grow and, and evolve. It really does feel that this, this full moon is going to activate some very deep hidden memories from those times and of course so many of us have got these um sort of memories within us and we've had past lives in Lemuria and there is wisdom and talent and gifts that are locked away Venus and Jupiter at this final degree point of mastery are going to really help us to unlock them and to reconnect with them and to be able to see you know what we are what we are um capable of so it is really, really exciting. And of course, you know, with the Pleiadian energy that is very much about bridging um, sort of our spiritual selves to our earthly bodies to so bridging heaven and earth, pulling in that information that has maybe been lost or repressed about how we can use nature to heal ourselves. You know, the, the information about plant medicine and crystals and things that we take from the earth to support us because we are ultimately of earth as well as from being from the stars. So it is that making that connection between the cosmos and the earth and bringing them together so that we can step into this next phase of who we are meant to be. So slightly longer video than normal, but there was just so much to say. So if you've got this far, I'm really grateful for listening. I hope I have sort of given you some maybe slightly different insight, um, you know, helped it, it sort of to work through the energies. No doubt at all that this is an incredibly powerful full moon, but then every single one of every single lunation in these times appears to be and there are so there's so much support and messages and light coming through as we really move through this time of shift now we're in it there's no going back um you know this is ascension we're doing it so thank you i am louise at spiral bright insight please you know check out my website if you want to know about my work spiralbright.co.uk um and yeah, I look forward to sharing more very soon. Have an amazing week.